And that's what I was telling you earlier. When people go, oh, well, I, it's worth 150, but I got one of those really cool showers that spray on the whole body and I got stainless steel appliances. So that, now my house is 160. No. How do we know that the comp that sold for 151 also didn't have that? Don't know. So we can't use that as a comping point. We can only comp things that we can get information on. Shauna? And wouldn't it be taste specific for each uh, buyer anyway? Like I could be a buyer that comes in and you may have that shower, but I'm going to probably rip it out anyway and redo it myself. So right. That's it so that's what I'm saying. It has no value. It doesn't change the value. And you're mm -hmm. absolutely correct. Now, what it does do is, and I'm going to say this, and this goes against what you just said. What it does do is makes it the best $150,000 house. Let's say you wanted to rip the shower out. And you just looked at one of the listings. It had one of the old shower heads. And you're like, okay, I'm going to have to rip that out. And you go, well, there's one more I want to look at. So we go look at another house that's three bedrooms, two bath. You walk into that bathroom and it already has the shower in it. Which one would you buy if they're both the same price? Exactly. It didn't change the house value to 160, but it made it the best 150 house there was. I've got one that's got, like I said, the olive green refrigerator and this one same price has got stainless steel oh this one's a better house and i'm going to use that word because like you said lashana sometimes it's case specific i know that for instance and i think i mentioned this pools how many like pools i don't my wife and i had too many children that were too young too close together I did not want a pool. As a matter of fact, people would go, oh, you love this house that's got a pool. I'm like, stop, I'm out. That was a deal breaker for me. So it is case specific sometimes when people say, well, it's a better house. Well, not to everybody because houses on a lake, I didn't want. Houses with an in-ground pool, I didn't want. I had too many, too much risk of young children playing in the pool, let alone neighbor's kids that may have came over. So yeah, it is case specific. All right, so that is the principle of substitution. It's based on the fact that one property will substitute for another. Got it? Now, the second way the appraiser can gain value is under what they call the cost approach. The cost approach is based on the fact of I am going to use the cost to build a property of another property and use it as the basis for the value of my home. All right. So, bang. <laughs> Now, the first thing we need to understand with the cost approach is the cost approach only deals with the structure. You have to subtract the value of the land out of the equation. And if you look at our tax parcel or our tax property card, it will give you a value of the structure and the value of the land and then the total. We are only going to be talking about the cost of the structure itself. That's the very first and most important part in the cost approach, is that you have to take the value of the land out of the equation, and you literally would just subtract it out. If the house is valued at 300 grand or 350, and the land's worth 50, then the structure is worth 300,000. That is what we are going to talk about. Now, when you're bit, so you're using this cost, there are three ways to determine the cost. Now, I have put them on your notes on screen. Your book has failed to mention these. However, your test 
does not fail to mention them. So make sure that you capture these three concepts so we can talk about them. And the first method is called the square foot method that we are going to talk about. It is a very simplistic way of looking at a property. Once again, there is my top view of the house. That is not an envelope. That's a top view of the house. You're looking right down in on it, all right? If the house I'm using was valued at 150 or sold for 150 and it was 1500 square feet and I'm going to build a 2000 square foot house, what would be the value of my house? Well, using the square foot method, you would find out that this house is $100 per square foot, right? 150,000 divided by 1,500 gives you $100 per square foot. So if I use that to determine a 2,000 square foot house, I get a value of $200,000. Very simple. It is looking at the house as one big unit and dividing it into equal square footage. And then I'm using that number to multiply the one I'm trying to find the value of times its square footage, and I get a value based on the cost. Thumbs up. What is the assumption that you're making when using a square foot house? Uh, the square foot method. There is one major assumption between these two houses that you have to know. What is it? What is the assumption I'm making between these two? It's a single, I was going to say it's a single story house. Not necessarily single story. I mean, I can use the square footage of a double story. It doesn't matter. Oh. Or a split level. But what is the assumption between the two? Think about the $100 a square foot. If I use that number on the second house, what is the relationship between the first and the second house? What is my assumption? Same Sarah's rate. chiming in. Sarah? That they're close together. You mean location-wise? Yeah, location-wise close together. That they're they in this area. Maybe not. And maybe this is a harder question than I'm making it because I'll give Cameron another shot. One more time, dude. I actually just kind of say the same thing. I was just going to say, like, it's going to, like, the house are in the same area. So you're kind of, like, basing the, the square footage off the other house. Right. You guys are really close. It's the same house. Right? Like a production builder. That's how I got $100 a square foot. When Davis builds a home, do you think he builds one home? No, he builds 50 of them. So he bought 50 sets of air conditioners. He bought 12 miles of wire. He bought 300 tons of stone. So he can use the exact same material on every house in his housing edition. That's how I got that hundred dollars a square foot because it used mowen faucets and train air conditioners and you know it's the same floor plan and yada yada yada. So the second house, hey dude, it's still using mowen faucets and train air conditioners. So I can use the hundred dollars a square foot because it's the same house. It's a cookie cutter Vinyl Village, what we call production home. That's very easy for you guys to do this math on the back of an envelope so that you can say, oh, well, the house in the uh, front costs this, therefore the house in the back costs this. That's the square foot method. It typically is done for production homes. Now, let's say that doesn't work. We actually have a second way of doing it. It's called the unit 
in place method. The unit in place. Still the same home. But here's the difference. Now, instead of the house looking uh, as one unit, we're going to come up with any number of units, one to 20, let's say. And in this one, we're going to look at the air conditioning unit. Well, this air conditioning unit's the same one, so there's no price change. Well, then we're going to look at, you know, the flooring unit. And we're going to look at the flooring unit over here. Well, this house is better by $5,000. So we add $5,000. When you get to the bottom, you just add all these units up and go, oh, well, it's plus $10,000 better. So based on the fact it was two hundred. dollars but we actually see it's $10,000 better. So now it's, I don't know what the heck's going on, 210,000. Because we looked, instead of it looking at it as a house, we looked at it as a bunch of units and then compared the units together, right? That's called the unit in place. And those units can be defined by anybody. Just how you want to do it. The landscaping, the roofing, the cement, the flooring, all that kind of stuff. You would just make sure however you broke it down in one, you would break it down in the other. So you're comparing the same units and you're looking at just the unit in place method, right? These would be like semi custom homes or you're using a Davis home to determine a Dura home. Very similar, but slightly different in amenities. That would be a good commonplace. Now the third method is called the quantity survey. The quantity survey method. In the quantity survey method, we are looking at everything. You need the blueprints to do a quantity survey method. Now, what happens, instead of looking at the flooring unit, you may say, well, the flooring unit is actually made up of carpet, uh, subfloor, padding, tacking strips, all kinds of stuff. You are looking at everything. And then you say, oh, well, Michael Duke's home used 2,000 two by fours. This one's going to use 2,100 two by fours. So we got to bring the value up. That home used 13 tons of cement. Our home used 15 tons of cement. This is no longer a $450 appraisal. This is a $5,000 appraisal and takes an appraiser maybe two, three weeks to do because what he will do is lay the blueprints out over here and these blueprints and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, all right? This is typically what happens with new construction homes. We talked about this earlier, that construction loan, we said does not have an asset to protect it. And he would use the plans to generate a value. This is the unit in place method. I am looking at the screen and I see eight or nine deer in the headlights. All right. What I'm trying to say is the square foot method. Imagine you're in an airplane and you fly over and you see a house. Oh, that's one little house. That would be the square foot method. Now you zoom in on that house and realize that house is made of 20 
different units, the flooring unit,